<clears throat> remember when I was introducing this topic last time, I said Ampere's law is the equivalent of the Gauss's law for uh, uh, electricity. So it helps you to find the magnetic field for some cylindrical, uh, uh, that's probably its main uh, thing, for cylindrical charge distribution, for cylindrical uh, current, and the, some other, few other uh, uh, current distributions called solenoid, toroid, pretty much that, solenoid and toroid, and I'll show you how it does that. So let's go to the uh, wire now, a cylindrical wire. In order for Ampere's law to be applied to the cylindrical wire, the wire needs to be thought of as a long wire. So it needs to be a long wire so that we don't worry about what's happening at the ends. And I need to be close to the wire, a certain distance away from the wire. Okay? So if that is the case, if the wire is long and I'm close to it, the direction, let's say the direction of the current is this way, Okay, the direction of the magnetic field that the current will create, if I apply the right hand rule, put your thumb in the direction of the current, curl your fingers around the wire, so the B field is going to come out of here and go in. So it's going to come out over here and go in to the uh, go down go down and then go into the board over there. So since the B field is going to be pretty uniform, it's going to be like that. I can do a line integral. What this is telling you is you can do a line integral of the B field around the wire. So B times two pi r, right? Uh, the dot product is just going to give you since the B is uh, uh, is along the circumference, the dot product is just going to give you B D L. times cosine of zero. The angle between the B and the DL is going to be zero because B is along the circumference. So that's one. And then the integral of B times DL is just B times two pi r, the circumference of the circle. Okay, so the magnetic field of a pretty long cylindrical wire outside of the wire has that behavior, mu zero i over 2 pi r. Notice how quick that was to do. So the Ampere's law is a quick way of getting the B field for uh, uh, some symmetric situations. Now, do you remember I told you to keep that in mind? Remember uh, the wire? I started out the lecture with the wire. Remember the magnetic field of the middle axis as a limit of that as B goes to zero. What was that result at the beginning of today's lecture? I'm pretty sure that was the case. I mean zero I over two pi B, right? So what that shows is that the Ampere's law is giving you the same answer as doing uh, uh, the Biort-Savart law and then finding the limit of the Biort-Savart law as B goes to zero. Okay. Now, would it have worked if I found the B of the left axis as limit as B goes to zero? Remember last uh, week when I found the magnetic field of a wire, I found the left axis the middle axis and then the right axis, and then I showed the left and the right are the same. So if I found the limit of the left axis as B goes to zero, do you think it will be mu zero I over two, uh, two, pi, R, uh, two pi B? The answer is no. 
because when I'm on the left side, it's no longer going to be a wire that's long, right? For Ampere's law to work, what needs to happen? It needs to be a long wire, and you need to be towards the center. You can't worry about end effects. So I don't think it's going to happen. As a matter of fact, take the result we got from last week for the left axis and find its limit as b goes to 0. Do it now. See, tell me what you get. Good. Perfect. Yeah. The limit of the left axis as b goes to 0 is measured over, over 4 pi b, which is half. So what that's telling you is if I'm close to the left end of a wire or the right end of a wire, the magnetic field is measure I over 4 pi b, Ampere's law does not give you that answer. Ampere's law cannot give you that answer. Ampere's law only thinks the wire is long and you're somewhere near the, the center. So it only works for them towards the center and you get measure I over 2 pi b, okay? Perfect. Good, good. 